Alrighty, welcome back to the uh, quarter scale speeder bike build. And uh, yeah, I know I need to get back on the Jaguar, but uh, I'm having too much fun on the speeder bike. So back to the speeder bike. Uh, the next part is going to be this one right here. And uh, this is the piece that goes on like that. And I really want to get this made so I can start attaching the pieces that uh, the little poles that come out the front there. And um, so there's at least five or six different ways you can make this shape larger. And, uh, and I know that because I've been thinking about how I'm going to do this for uh, several days. Um, I've spent many hours thinking about how I'm going to make this thing bigger. Now, the obvious, the obvious choice would be to take a sheet of aluminum and uh, bend the edges up and then cut out the shape and you're done. And that was the first thing I was going to try. And um, then I really started thinking about how would I do that? Because um, if, you, if you don't start the bends in the exact right place, then the overall width would not be correct. Um, so that was the first challenge, for the, which there's ways to do that. There is math um, for, uh, for planning that out. And it has to do with the thickness of the material and and there's ways to do that. Um, I've never been that good at it, uh, but it is possible. But you also have to have a, a pretty accurate thing to bend it around, like a, like a tool, uh, which I don't have. And also aluminum at that thickness. Uh, this would have to be at least three to five millimeters thick, uh, minimum three millimeters thick at the, at the minimum. Uh, because when I machine those details in, I don't want to machine all the way through. So I'd like for it to be about five millimeters thick, give or take a little bit, you know, give or take a couple of millimeters. Um, and bending aluminum that thick is not the easiest thing to bend. So the more I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking it would be a struggle and it might not be right when it was done. Um, it would be hard to get it exactly perfect. So I started thinking about a bunch of other ways, and um, based on the materials that I have and the skills that I have, the way I chose to do it might seem like the stupidest way to do it. Um, but so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it out of six, six individual pieces of aluminum, two for each corner and then two for the center. So what I've done is I've taken pieces of aluminum angle and I've JB welded them together. And by the way, this is aluminum angle. Please stop calling it aluminum angle iron. I can't tell you how many YouTubers I've seen recently that would refer to this as aluminum angle iron. There's no such thing as aluminum angle iron, so stop calling it aluminum angle iron. It's aluminum angle or angle aluminum. But it's not aluminum angle iron. Anyways, um, so with these two pieces together, uh, that's given me almost seven millimeters, six point nine millimeters, which is which is great um, because I got plenty of room to uh, to machine the details and not go through. So, anyways, with these two pieces overlapped like that. That gives me the two sides. And then for the bottom, I've got two more pieces of the same thickness. That'll go in like that. So that gives me that basic shape. And it's thick enough that I can cut in, I can file in that radius like that. And that'll give me... That'll give me the correct radius. And also, this will make it easier to mount this in the milling machine to make those details. So the first thing I want to do is cut these to length. These are oversized. Um, I made them over lengths because uh, the material I had had holes in it. So I'll cut it off about there. And then it'll still be a little bit oversized. But then I can put these in the milling machine. And I can mount it in the, in the milling machine this way take off that top peak, so then I can just go in and file the rest of the shape in there. I can also, in the milling machine, 
I can cut in the right shape. You know, it'll be something, I never claim to be an artist, but uh, something like that. So I'll cut that shape in and I'll do the same to both pieces. Actually, I'll probably mount them like this and do them together so they're the same, maybe. I don't know, I haven't figured that part out yet. But I can get the shape correct on these two so they're a smaller piece instead of trying to do one large piece. And then I could just mount this in the milling machine this way and machine in those details here. And um, that should be a fairly easy thing to do. And once all those details are in, then I can JB weld these all together. But uh, so anyways, that that is the beginning of that. So let me get some stuff cut and shaped up, and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so I took the aluminum pieces before I glued them together, set them in the milling machine this way. I took about three millimeters off of that point. Uh, that gives me a head start in filing the radius. And uh, then I took them into the milling, or to the bandsaw, and I uh, made all the measurements, and I cut the basic shape in the bandsaw, and then I glued them together the way you see here. And uh, I glued them together with a piece of masking tape on each piece. So, so these are basically stuck to, to masking tape with glue in between the masking tape. That makes it a lot easier to separate these without having a bunch of glue on the metal I have to clean up later. Uh, so these will pop apart pretty easy, but they hold together good enough for machining. Um, but even so, I put a clamp on each end while I was machining it. Uh, so anyways, in the milling machine, grabbing hold of here, I milled that down and that down and then into here to give me the, uh, the basic shape of that. All right. I still need to I still need to put in the radius here like that. And I still need to come into here and put in the shape like that. And I'm thinking I could probably put this back in the middle, uh, clamp it this way and take off that corner and maybe reposition it to give me a head start on filing that radius. And maybe for this one, I could mount it like this and come in with an end mill and uh, carve that out that way. So let me try that and I'll get it final filed to shape and then we can get these pieces separated and uh, figure out what the next step is. All right, so last night I uh, separated the pieces. Actually, I um, filed in the curve, milled that area in and sanded it all. Not completely, it's still a little bit rough. Separated the pieces and then bonded it to the other uh, section here. So this is what it's looking like now. Uh, still a, quite a bit of work to do. Uh, I still need to file that back edge to match that angle. I still need to round off the corners here. As you can tell here, got to round off those corners. And I just want to sand and smooth all of the sharp edges just so it's a little bit more roundy. Um, but the next thing I want to do, and obviously that'll get sanded all flat and and blend it in nicely. Uh, but the next thing I wanna do is mill in these details right here. So I've got an end mill that's um, that's pretty much exactly three times wider than that. It's not exactly, but it's close enough, it'll look fine. And uh, those are gonna go in right along here. You can see the, uh, kinda, you can see the scribe line for one edge of it. And actually that seam is where the other edge is. And I didn't intend on that. I didn't want that. And maybe I'm overthinking it, but I, I'm kind of concerned that the joint or that seam could mess up the, the edge of the machined in pocket. So I'm going to move it over about, I don't know, two millimeters just to get it away from the seam here. Um, and then I'll, I'll mill those details in. So what I need to do is take all the measurements for all of the uh, the recesses and how deep they are. Um, 
because you know it goes in and down and then up and that yeah it's uh so i'm going to take a lot of measurements for that and then uh, figure that out on the dro and then i'll get this set up in the mill and uh see how that turns out and if it looks like garbage i'll fill it in with uh bondo and try again <laughs> i don't know it should be fine um, i'm i'm expecting it should be fine but um oh and also obviously i need to finish rounding that corner off here making that more roundy um but yeah i can do that later i want to machine those in first in case i screw that up you know i'm gonna you know do the hard part first i guess but uh so far i think it's looking pretty good um if we bring over the uh, carbon fiber piece this goes about like that so that's how that's looking so uh so far so good so let me get some more work done. We'll come back and show you here in a little bit. Okay, so I've got this pretty much done. Uh, I might need to do a little bit of trimming, um, but as you can see, I've got the uh, the machining work done here. And again, that's to replicate uh, that design, that pattern. Uh, it's kind of, uh, it'll look better, I hope, once I get some paint on it. Uh, but it's kind of hard to see with the uh, shiny machining uh, exactly how that looks. But uh, but you can see where I plunged down and then moved over. And, of course, I used the uh, the DRO for that. The end mill was a uh, quarter-inch end mill, which is about 6.4 diameter, best I could measure. And to use the DRO, uh, this is pretty much what I had to do here. So I sketched out the, uh, the pattern here, and I decided to go down two and a half millimeters for the main channel, and then each one of the, uh, the little divots down uh, went down to three and a half. So I first milled the entire length down to two and a half, and then I came back, and I would have to go to these points and go down to three and a half and then over then back up and then over and then down and over yeah so these were basically uh the points on the dro so starting at zero you know i went over to 15.4 because the first the first length there i wanted that to be nine millimeters but you can't go over nine millimeters and down you have to go over nine millimeters plus the diameter of the end mill which is 6.4 so i had to go over 15.4 and then go down well, then the next channel, I want that to be 11 millimeters. So each divoted down area is 11 millimeters. So then 9 and 11, that takes me to 20. So I'd go over to 15.4, then go down, and then go over to 20, and then go back up. And then each middle spot is 5 millimeters. But again, I have to add the diameter of the cutter. So I'd have to go over to 31.4, then back down, then over to 36, then back up, then over to that and down. And so this was kind of my plan. Um, these are all of the uh, the measurements or the DRO points and kind of my, uh, my map for going through and making all of those cutouts. And it was very repetitive and a little nerve-wracking because, uh, you know, I was really taking my time. I made sure... I didn't um, turn the handle the wrong way or go down too deep or anything like that. So a little time consuming, a little tedious, a little nerve wracking, but uh, I think it came out looking pretty good. And um, so, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that, fairly happy with that. And you can also see I've got two holes here. We'll see what those do here in a second. All right, now for mounting... Uh, the rods here, I made a block, looks like this, and these rods basically fit over that block, like that, and then this piece, and then this piece screws right into there. Uh, it's just aluminum, uh, countersunk screws for 1032s, and um, a couple of threaded holes here, 
We'll get back to those in a second. But basically that block, again, just a block of aluminum. And I had these spacers. I'm not sure where they came from. Something I scavenged from something I made a while or something I took apart a long time ago. And they actually come down into here about 10 millimeters. So those are counterboard into here and uh, kind of a light press fit with super glue, about 10 millimeters. I'm sure those will never come out, uh, but just to make sure, I will probably drill a hole right about there and put a roll pin in it just to make sure those don't come loose. Uh, again, probably not needed, but you know. Um, so those go on like this. And notice those bushings are a little shy of the surface of that uh, because this goes on so that clamps those down just like that and then finally this goes on here like this and a couple of bolts right in through here. All right, so that all holds that together. And so then what I did was I made a couple of templates that would bolt onto the side of that and fit up into the body shell. And uh, I made the templates out of this uh, aluminum honeycomb material. Uh, now this one, I made these two first. Uh, these didn't end up working. Uh, they were kind of the wrong size, but they bolt onto that block like that. Notice I got the holes here and I just ran a couple of bolts through it like that. And then I can put some of the chopped carbon with epoxy on the edge. Then I set it into the body shell until those set. Then I could take this back off and reinforce on the inside. So let me show you what that looks like. And here's what that looks like there. So there's the two bulkheads. And again, you can see the holes that bolt through the aluminum block. And then uh, I went in and reinforced it with some carbon fiber, put a little support here, reinforce with carbon fiber. And so now this holds this block here, just like that. And so now that holds all of that together. And that's that lower piece pretty much done. Now I think it's a little bit too much gappy right in here, maybe, I don't know. I gotta take some measurements. I could always take off like maybe two or three millimeters off of that edge, bring this whole thing up a little bit. Uh, but we'll see how that looks after I make this uh, middle piece right here. That middle piece here goes right in here. And that'll also give a third connection point right up in front, just so this whole thing's not hanging from way back here. So there will eventually be a third connection point here tying it all together. But that is that right there, pretty much done. So the next part on this video, I want to start working on, well, as I said, that middle piece right there, I want to start working on that, and also the control arms or the control rods and bell cranks that go here, and then work my way forward. Oh, and I just taped a scrap piece of aluminum there to hold those in the right position. Uh, but I want to start working on all this front stuff here. So in the next video, I want to finalize all of this. But for now, this video is probably plenty long enough I'm going to leave it as that, but there is the bottom chin piece. I don't know what you call that, but there's that bottom piece right there. Uh, pretty much done. So uh, when I get back to the final assembly and final fit, it might change a little bit, but uh, that's it. Uh, now, I will more than likely bond that block in here permanently. And by the way, the way I put it together now is not quite right. Basically, I'd put this block in here first, put the bolts through, and then screw all of that on top of that. Um, that way it's not, you know, loose and falling apart. But I will more than likely bond that aluminum block in here permanently with like some kind of epoxy 
and then bolt it and then put it together. That way there's no way it's ever going to come apart. Um, and I might reinforce this more in here. Probably not needed, but um, yeah, a little overkill's never stopped me before. So anyways, I'll leave you with this. And um, as always, until next time, thanks for watching.